channel. Today I have a thrift flip home decor video for you and since I'm filming this intro after I've already completed all the projects I can tell you that I really 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 love how all of them turned out so I hope that you enjoy this video and enjoy the different pieces that I've created. And another reason that I'm really excited for this video is because a lot of the products that I'm actually working with that I found from the thrift store are items that I've seen at other thrift stores over time. So what that basically means is if you like some of these projects and you want to recreate them, chances are you can probably find similar items to that at your local thrift stores. So I think that's just pretty cool because then this isn't just a video of pure entertainment, but also potentially something where you can make your own version or your own home decor piece for yourself. So I think that's cool. Without further ado, let me get started with the first project. Okay, so here's the thing. For months, I have had this picture saved as a screenshot to my phone. I'm gonna insert it right now. It is of this really pretty vase, and I have had this idea of a thrift flip for basically that amount of time. And so what I was hoping to find all this time were a set of plastic bangles, similar to the type I would have worn when I was like in middle school. I remember them vividly. However, I have never been successful, okay? So when I was last at the thrift store, I did find these little metal rings. I did figure out that they were napkin rings, just in case you were wondering, but either way, I did get really, really inspired and I came up with two ideas to do with the napkin rings that I found. So let's get started right now. So here I am at the thrift store discovering these teal napkin rings for only $3.99 and there was also a flask in that bag but I won't be using that. So I'm just opening up that bag and giving you a better look at these napkin rings. I think they're going to work out perfectly for this project. Next I just grabbed my E6000 glue to stick the rings together and I'm applying a little bit of glue around the edge of the ring just like you see here so not too much glue and then I'm just placing another ring on top of that. Then using some paper towel I'm wiping away any of the excess glue that there is and then I'm just repeating that whole process of gluing the rings together a couple more times. After I was done gluing them together, I ended up with one set of three rings and one set of five rings. And I'm just gonna start off with the five ring tower, which I'm gonna turn into a little bud vase for dried flowers. So to start with that, I'm taking some air dry clay and just placing it inside one end to create a little bit of a base for the vase. I just tried to smooth it out as best as I could by hand and then I took a spatula and actually pressed the clay in through the other end to make it really really compact and smooth and then I just let it dry overnight. Once it was ready to go I just spray painted it with some matte black spray paint and then waited for that to dry as well. Now moving on to the matching candle holder. So for this, I took the set of three rings and I took a pretty large chunk of clay and pushed it all the way through the rings. I wanted to make sure that the clay was really, really compact and filled up all the space in the center of the three rings. I smoothed out the top and bottom of the clay and then I grabbed a pillar candle from Ikea and pushed it through until the entire base of the candle was covered. I left it to dry for about a day and then I removed the candlestick and it just popped out really, really easily. Next, I grabbed a really fine grit nail file and just filed away the excess clay and then I grabbed a nail buffer and smoothed it out all around. I grabbed the exact same matte black spray paint and gave it a nice good coat and just like that my little bud vase and candle holder set are complete. out that was kind of like a last minute improvisation because I was initially just thinking of turning them into two bud vases but I'm glad that I turned one into a bud vase and one into a candle holder they're a nice match together but also really nice separately and just so you know I do think this is one of the projects that you could probably recreate because I've been to the thrift store since I picked up these ones and I have seen really similar napkin holders to that so chances are you can find something pretty similar that you can work with at your local thrift store Okay, so next up we 
have a floor lamp slash table lamp slash lantern style lamp. The items that they're made out of are so random. I just got inspired when I saw them. Now, I'm gonna roll the footage in one second of me picking it up from the thrift store, at which point I had no idea what they were. So if you recognize it right off the bat, let me know down below in a comment. I just wanna know how many people could recognize it. I had no idea what it was until later when I looked it up. <laughs> So here are the mystery items I was talking about. They are wood, there are slits in between the wood. Do you know what they are? <laughs> I was honestly racking my brain trying to think of what they were before Google helped me out, okay? Okay, so as you just saw, I got a set of these four items from the thrift store. They're wood, they're a unique shape. I thought they were cool. And then I looked at the label and I could tell that these are Ikea labels. And I did a little Google search these were actually CD holders from a very long time ago. They're clearly not currently sold. I found one picture of them. I got these because I thought they were a really nice shape. I initially was thinking that this could turn into a lantern if I add two pieces of these together. However, I just thought of a cool way that I could actually use all four of them. So this is two of them and then I have two more. So I could use all four of them and to turn it into something even cooler than a lantern in my opinion. But just to show you that there are obviously different ideas that you can come up with with random items that you know, are almost garbage or completely obsolete because who has CDs nowadays? Let's get started with this. I'm hoping that this is gonna work out because what I have envisioned in my head is so cool and so aesthetic, but we'll just have to find out. So let's get started right now. So to start off, I'm actually just removing these little plastic furniture protectors that have definitely been stuck on here for about 20 years. And this was a small mission that maybe took me like 45 minutes. So I ended up actually using the end of an outlet cap to scrape off the sticky residue and that made it go a lot faster. And as a side note, you guys, I just saw the tag for the price and uh, I cannot believe that this only costs $4 worth it. At the same time, I feel like $4 is a lot for something that you wouldn't even know what it is. Like people wouldn't even know that this is a CD thing. So yeah, but still for my project, $4 is a win. <laughs> Next, I'm actually gonna place all of the CD holders standing up so that they're all facing each other. And I'm placing these first two directly facing each other and then the other two on the other sides, but I'm just making sure that these second two are actually on the outside of the first two. Grabbing my trusty E6000 glue, I'm going to apply a line of glue down the inner edge on the two CD holders that are on the outside. So I'm just applying a nice line of glue and sticking it back in place. I'm using painter's tape to make sure that it stays in place as well. So just one little piece on each side. And then I'm repeating that whole glue step once again on the other outer CD holder as well. And then I'm just reinforcing that once again with painter's tape. Next, I'm flipping the whole structure upside down and I'm making sure it's secure on the other end as well with once again, some more painter's tape. I let the glue fully dry and then I removed all the tape and now I have my pretty lampshade for my floor slash table lamp. Next, I found a mini lampshade that was actually from my wall sconce in my old apartment and it happened to be the exact size of the inside of the newly created wooden lampshade. I'm just removing the outer part of the lampshade and what I'm left with is actually a light holder circle part which is perfect and a couple other pieces which you'll see in a minute. I'm also using this Strala plug-in light from Ikea. Next, I'm just spray painting all of these little pieces gold so that it looks cohesive and professional. Once that's done and dry, now I'm on to assembling the whole lamp. So starting with a circle light holder, I'm just squeezing it in about two inches down and it's already really snug, but I wanna make sure it stays in place so I'm securing it with a little bit of hot glue. Then I'm just threading the light cord through the holder and twisting on the cap so that it's also secured in place really tight. And finally, I'm just adding a little light bulb and the lamp is complete. I love it so much, you guys. I hope you do too. Honestly, this is 
probably not one of the DIYs that you could recreate that easily. I don't know. I mean, maybe you'll run into some luck and find these like 20 year old CD holders. You might. I'm probably gonna style it in my like den slash office workspace. That's completely a disaster. It's actually like a storage space right now. Um, but yeah, I think it'll look really, really cute in there. I just like that it's really unique. I like the exposed wood. I think I might give it a layer of stain if I wanna like change the color up a little bit in the future. But yeah, I really like how that one turned out as well. Okay, so last but not least is my absolute favorite thrift flip of the video. I have saved my favorite for last or my best for last. And um, yeah, I think the best part about it, in addition to the fact that I find it really cute and matches my perfect aesthetic, it's like everything that I could ever want. And it looks like I bought it at a store completed as is. Aside from all those aspects, my favorite part about it is that if you also enjoy this thrift flip, chances are you can find something very similar at a thrift store to work with and can probably recreate your very own version. So let's get started, you guys. I stumbled upon this large lampshade that I think is from the 70s and I came up with a really sweet idea to turn it into a boho pendant lamp. What I really really liked about this lampshade is the fact that it's scalloped at the bottom and it looked a little bit like a flower. So to start I'm using my box cutter and I'm removing the outer shade by basically cutting down a section and then pulling the section off as best as I could. I also found that removing the little ribbon that was attached on the outside helped with that as well. Now this actually took me about 30 minutes and those bits of shade were actually really sharp so just watch out. Then I noticed that the whole metal frame is actually covered in a ribbon as well so I started peeling that off and then I found that using my box cutter really helped me with that. And just so you know I had to remove those pieces of fabric because the bits of shade were actually stuck to it and as I mentioned those bits of shade were quite sharp. Next, I got this fiber rush off of Amazon, which is basically like paper cording you'd see on those woven stools. And I took a pretty big section of it and started weaving it around the metal frame. I wrapped the rope around a beam, pulling the rest of the cording through and continued on wrapping. So basically over wrapping it around under and then back over it and then back under. And I just kept doing that for quite some time. And then when I ran out of cord, I added some hot glue to the closest beam. I attached the end of the cord to that beam and then I cut off the excess. And then I just went ahead and hot glued a new piece of cord to that same beam so it looked like a continuous piece of string. After that, I basically continued wrapping around and around and around and I made sure to wrap the cord really tight because I found that that's what made it look the best and most professional. I just wanted to mention that there is a cheaper alternative to the fiber rush that I used and that would be using jute and I actually entertain using that as well but you know how jute is a little bit hairy? I really just wanted a super clean look and that's why I went for the fiber rush because there's absolutely no shedding or anything like that but jute is still a really good option and it's super affordable as well. Once I finished wrapping the cord the whole way down, I wanted to finish off the scallop bottom and for that I wrapped the cord really tight around each little scalloped section. This part got a little tricky for passing the rest of the cord bundle through, but it just took a little bit of patience and before I knew it, it was done. off I hot glued the very end to the closest beam and just cut off the rest of the cord. Now on to hanging the pendant light. So because this lampshade is actually meant to go on top of a regular lamp, the hole for hanging it is actually really small. So after about two hours of googling I figured out how to make it work. So I got this cheap pendant light off of Amazon so I could wire it to the ceiling and I basically unscrewed the cord from the mounting plate and then pulled it out of the hole of the mounting plate so it's completely detached. Then I threaded it up through the small hole of the lampshade and then I reattached it through the mounting plate and screwed it back in place. Now just in case you're trying to make a plug-in pendant light instead, there is a different solution for that and I will link that down below because I did figure that one out as well. And the last step is just to install it and once you do that, your pendant light is ready to go. Which of these 
these thrift flips were your favorite. As usual, I'm gonna let you know my ranking. So as I mentioned, the pendant light was definitely by far my favorite. Next to that was probably the candle holder and the bud bays. I just think they're really, really cute. They'll go on my aesthetic. They match with anything. They're just adorable. I like them. Um, and last but not least, I would say the floor light slash table light, lantern light, whatever you want to call it. I think that's super cute as well. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, then give it a like down below. And if you like this type of content and you want to see more, then subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, pretty please check me out on Instagram. I'm at DIY Delia with an underscore at the end. And if you happen to recreate any of these thrift flips or DIYs on my channel, please, please tag me so that I can see them and share them to everyone who is following so everyone can get a little bit more inspired. Thank you so much for watching and until next time you guys, 